everybody to the newest episode of Queen's Court. Um, today we are not talking about Raw. We are talking about the sh show that is WrestleMania 9. But first, it's yours truly, the Tribal Queen. Alongside me, we got Husky Rhodes and Mike Duplessis. I know we're all feeling pissed off about it, but besides that, how's everybody doing? Doing okay. Ready yes. to get anger out. Yeah, all things all things considered, I'm doing okay. But God, damn it, dude! I had to, we had to watch this fucking pay per view under duress. This Man. is fucking wow! Like it's, it was torture. Fuck, it's brutal. God damn it! Fuck, it is so brutal. The only good thing I want to say, though, like we talked about this before, was Bobby and uh, Randy Savage on commentary. Oh yeah, so it st it starts out Gorilla Monsoon yeah. shows out Gorillas in a toga, <clears throat> and then it cuts to the first ever WWF appearance of the voice of my childhood, Jim Ross, and seeing Jim Ross in this fucking toga and showing off these gold spray painted sandals he's got on, I was just like, oh. Oh no, they're fucking, why are they doing this to my boy? And then the entrances come out. It's like, <laughs> Caesar and, Jul and Cleopatra come out and the crowd goes mild. No mm -hmm. one cares. They're just like, what is this shit? But then a god amongst men, Randy Savage comes out. The best intro of the entire fucking thing. Beating him the grapes and just... Oh, God, it's so good. And that suit, so that purple and white. Woo! Beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful, man. So, I have my first interesting fact, if I can. Go on. So, at this time, Jim Ross did a radio show. Yeah. And he... Uh... He was in the middle of his contracts with WCW and WWF. So the radio show itself was sponsored by WCW. So once he got signed to the WWF, he used his WCW sponsored radio show to promote WrestleMania 9. That's wild. Wow. I didn't know that. That's yeah. crazy. I knew he had a radio show, but I didn't realize that it was WCW sponsored radio. Yes, yeah, it was WCW, WCW sponsored. Ted Turner paid for, and he used his last few of those episodes to promote WrestleMania Nine. God, that's that's hilarious. <laughs> oh man, and then fucking Bobby Heenan. Bobby. <laughs> God bless Bobby Heenan. <laughs> Coming out on this fucking camel backwards. <laughs> Get me off this thing. Get me off this thing. <laughs> Gets to the ring. The camel, the camel like botches kneeling down. Yeah. He starts the camel's like, 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 nope. <laughs> it's like, it goes down. He's like, nope. Nope. And then he finally gets down. Bobby eats shit. <laughs> <laughs> like keeps falling we, over. We see a lot of Bobby. <laughs> and too Savage, much Bobby. <laughs> Savage lifting up the back of the robe and just showing Bobby Heenan's ass, and then just like giving a thumbs up to the camera. Like, like... <laughs> Savage was like, "Whatever, dude. I I have a premonition. This show sucks, so I'm gonna have some fun." <laughs> and him and Bobby already had heat. Dude, oh my god, yeah. And then they, like, like, later on, they almost fucking come to blows after the fucking Money Inc. match. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> Savage is gonna kill this man. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh god. But it started out, that explains why my little subtitle says Justice for Tatanka. Because uh, yes. that first match with Shawn Michaels and Tatanka, he should have won that. He should have. Oh, absolutely they, they, should have. They, they had a skyrocket to this dude, and they killed it. Absolutely killed it over some like. What I can't, I don't even remember the finish because I got I, I watched most of this over like a few days, and I completely <coughs> down. What was the, what was the finish again? It was a count out. Yeah, oh, it was a count out. Yeah, That's yeah right. it was a horrible. Yeah, because I put 
on my notes, I said, what the fuck was the ending? Tatanka had the pin. Yeah. And then result of a count out. One of the many fucked up finishes in this goddamn period. Seriously. I, I was literally about to say this, this finish of this match is a sign of things to come yes. because the, the, some of the finishes in this are just inexcusable. Like absolutely inexcusable. Well, and they had a uh, Luna Vachon and uh, yeah. Sherry yeah. out there. We have the return of. And she closed like Sherry on the she, outside. She beats the shit out of Sherry, dude. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The return of Luna. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Yeah, that was yeah because she had done work with them previously, and then yeah, in the mid '80s. Came, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then came back. I this the show. I was going to say, throughout the show, they kept talking, I guess, in the first aid, they were, were going back at it again. Yeah. yeah. They kept which, on brawling backstage, yeah. which you never yeah. saw, but you heard yeah. about it. Yeah, I don't know. The why only backstage even... brawl we saw was uh, at the end. Mr. Perfect and Perfect. Lex. Yeah. 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 And then I, Sean. I just, yeah. That yeah. Was, yeah. And yeah. Sean. I don't know. I don't understand why they didn't, like, show Sherry. Cut back yeah. to that, because they could have built something with that. Mm -hmm. But... Then again, so it's, it's 93 was, and Vince didn't care about winning. This was the third straight year Sean opened main. Is it? That's right. Yep. Oh, and wow. It's seven and eight, too. Yeah. Because he's he opened up seven and eight as tag matches with Marty. This mm -hmm. was his first. Yeah, this yeah. his first singles match at Mania. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, Tatanka should have won that. That was, that was trash. Just like, it wasn't a bad match. It was just... Yeah, the match, the match itself ending. was fine. It was just a, it was just yeah. a, a weird ending. Man. Then we got Mean Gene interviewing Rick and Scott Steiner, and I put in my, I put in my notes. This is the only promo in the history of the Steiners being in wrestling where they're both completely coherent. Yeah. Because, yeah. because yeah. like later on in like the late nineties. Scotty just goes off the fucking rails. Like, mm -hmm. he's just saying the most wild shit and, like, yeah. gibberish because he's coked and steroided out of his brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, but, yeah, it was just a solid babyface tag team promo. And, like, I was like, okay, and it got the point across. So it's like, cool, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then my match of the night is next. Yes. Yeah, the, the Head Steiners. Shrinkers versus the Steiners. Yeah. Dude. This is the, obviously the best answer. Yeah. Dude, the 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 botch stun gun. Yeah. Where it picks him up and just yeets Scott over the top rope. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Like, yeah. That's terrifying. Dude, but yeah. What did you guys think of this Steiners match? I loved, I loved it. it. Two, yeah. Four meaty men kicking each other's asses. Big meaty men slapping meat. Yeah. Uh, this was our this was our meat fest match of the night. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was awesome. It was a really good match. Scott Scotty nearly necking himself on that Frankensteiner at the end too. That was my botch. I was like, okay, that did not look good. It's like that didn't feel good. No. Like that. There's no way that felt good. Uh, and then Bobby, I put in my notes that Bobby and Randy were arguing. That was oh, that's yeah, like was every a match. They kept on going at it the whole, every... the whole show. Bobby kept... says, "I go back there, but the camel's back." He said he'd go back stage or whatever, but the camel's back there. I don't trust that camel. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking Oof. trust the camel either. Fucking yeah. camel's scary. <laughs> Yeah, the the camel nearly killed Bobby. Like <laughs> that camel was like, "Fuck this fat bastard! Get him off of me!" But really, like they had better entrances than half of the wrestlers. Uh, yeah, yeah. On the show, oh, like those two had the best entrances, besides uh, the Undertaker. Oh yeah, Taker. As far as wrestlers go, Taker has the best entrances. Yeah. I've got some I've got some notes on that when we get to Taker Gonzalez too. Mm -hmm. What's what's next on this card, Brie? It was uh well first it was Gene with uh Doink. Oh, oh wait, yes. no, yeah, he was back it must have been backstage with Joink and then it was yeah. the Clutch versus Doink match. Creepy 
doink interview. God, they're born pretty. Yeah, he was he was really on one this evening. And yeah, fucking uh, like, crushing. They showed the recap of uh, him beating Crush with the the cast arm. The fake arm. Yeah, the fake arm. The cat. Which came came back in the match. Yeah. The, the tale of two doinks. Wow. We have, we have second doink bra hiding underneath the ring, comes out and attacks Crush. So who I found out who is the second Steve doink is, is. Is Skinner. Steve Kerr. Skinner. Steve Kerr. Mm. Shaven Skinner. They do the whole mime spot. So great. Beautiful. I love it. And Bobby's just like, this is cr- this is crazy. We are seeing an optical illusion. This push for the optical illusion the whole time is hilarious. Oh, God, it's so funny. <laughs> so fucking funny. Oh, and then... The spit kick by Crush, though, was mm-hmm. fucking impressive. For a dude that size, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Like, he's 6'9", 300 pounds. Mm. Doing yeah. that jumping spin kick, I was like, "Holy oh, shit!" Got in the air. Like, oh, okay, crash. Yeah, he had some. He had some hang time on that dude. It was crazy. And <laughs> do, that stupid Doink the Clown one, but yeah. with the help of Doink number two, yeah. which one took? Which one got the win? Was it? Doink that Regular started doink. the match, or was it the one that came in? Uh, it was the one in the match. Yeah. It was, okay. It was, I, it was, that part. Yeah, because Steve yeah. Kern does the spot, takes out Crush. They do the mime gimmick, and, and then, then yeah, he sees Crush and just gets back into the ring, he gets back under the ring. Fucking and then, well played. Yeah, and then fucking you know, Bill Alfonso comes out and it's like, I saw two of them. I swear to God, I saw two of them, baby. And they get under, they get under the ring and look and. For some it reason, can't find him. Nothing there. <laughs> like that's gotta suck. Like if you have to do like a spot where you have somebody come out from under the ring and you're like the third match into the card, you're like sitting under that ring. Like I hope this fucking thing doesn't fucking fall. Like mm-hmm. I hope these guys put this ring together good because like that's gotta fucking. Suck. I always wonder that with like in the mid two thousand with uh, Hornswoggle. <laughs> Yeah, because they would have him there for main events all night. Yeah, because he would he would talk about that in, in like shoot interviews and stuff like yeah. that. They're yeah. like, "What would you do?" He's like, "I'd have like a PSP with me and just fucking hang out, have yeah. like, yeah. have a couple of drinks with me, and like just like have a couple Gatorades and shit, just sitting there and just play games." And then like Finley would look over and be like, "Let's go!" And he'd come or flying be out. in Japan and fall asleep and nap and miss his spot with the Undertaker and get yelled at by Mark Calloway. The whole time he's in the ring taking the choke slam, he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry. Hornswoggle. <laughs> yeah. Take her, taking it back. All right, what happened? I fell asleep. Wait, you, you fell asleep? He's like, Yeah, the, the whole match, you were asleep. He's like, Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, God. And then you get Todd Pettengill in the crowd talking to fans. The Japanese cameraman cracked I was like, me. I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> I, I was like, I don't know how to react to this. So I just kept hitting I kept hitting the plus ten feature. Yeah. Move this move this thing along. And then it just yeah. cuts to like two bros and togas in the crowd. The frat boys were all one. <laughs> yeah. I was like, these dudes have been drinking since like 8 a.m. Yeah, like, no, yeah. Fucking, they, they had to be like UNLV students or like Arizona uh, State students who like yeah. came for the show. Like, okay, yeah, they were those dude. Those dudes were definitely some UNLV frat boys that were like, whatever, dude. Our dorm is like 10 minutes away from MGM Grand. Let's go to let's go to fucking Mania and have a blast. <laughs> just 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 dudes being dudes in togas, just having fucking having a blast. Yeah. And like they're frat boys, so you know they had the togas on deck. They had them on from the night before. Yeah, mm-hmm. is that? They had a to- they had a toga party because it's like fuck it, we're going to Mania. 
Yeah, they they woke, just woke up and they're like, oh, let's go to Mania. <laughs> they didn't. They just they've been up all night, just constantly partying in these fucking togas. Ooh man. All right, so we got Bob and the Backlund next one. And Razor Ramon. This is this is probably the shortest <laughs> one. Razor Ramon versus Bob Backlund. I feel like that was the shortest match. Yeah, the yeah. Whole. it definitely was. Yeah, it like, was. Scotty gave him some offense too. Like, yeah, like I, I didn't, I kind of figured because I didn't remember watching this one like a while ago. I kind of figured like, oh, this is gonna be a squash, but no, it was a good, it was a solid back and forth. <laughs> My favorite part is Razor Ramon's supposed to be the heel in this shit, but he's right. getting cheered like, mm -hmm. no, no. right? Yeah. yeah, this is that. This is like right around that time where they are like plotting. Fans to are like, we want the bad guy. Yeah, it's like we love this guy. Fuck everybody else you're pushing. Give us this guy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was. It, this is like that that time when you could get away with like the the small package finish and the crowd yeah. pops for it. Yeah. It was like, but yeah, this it was a it was a solid back and forth. Really, mm -hmm. it was a great showing from both men. Did what it was supposed to do. Yeah. And in the middle of it, Randy was talking about how uh, Lex Luger knocked out Bret Hart or got into it with him at like a WrestleMania breakfast or a lunch. Yeah. And it was suspicious. Oh, he said it was suspicious. Yeah. It, it was suspicious. <laughs> Whatever the fuck. Yeah, like. Mm. That's crazy. Then we got a. Me another Mean Gene promo this time, and this is where the 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 story about Hogan's fucked up eye, yeah, starts to come into play. Mm -hmm. It starts out DBS. He's like, "Yeah, we're in our backyard. Blah, blah, blah. You don't kick a dog in its backyard." Blah blah blah. blah. Then IRS was like, "Hogan was in an incident at the gym." Mm -hmm. which is why he got this black eye. I looked into this to be like, how did, how did Hogan's eye get all messed up? Well, Hogan says in an interview that him and Brutus the Beefcake were riding jet skis and he wrecked on the jet ski. That's how his eye got messed up. Well, according to Jim Cornette, and a bunch of other people who watched of, it. And a bunch of other people. The reason why Hogan has a black eye. Savage is punched because, him in the face. Is because Ooh. Savage and Miss Elizabeth were right in the middle of going through a divorce. Mm. And Miss Elizabeth and Hogan's then wife were best friends. So Liz goes and stays with Linda and Hogan. And Savage was known to be... Um, Jealous, really, fuck. jealous, jealous, and paranoid as hell. Mm. So he just rolls up on Hogan and punches him in the face. So that's why Hogan's eye is fucked, up. <laughs> which makes it even weirder given the commentary for any time Hogan's on is Savage has to put over Hogan, who he mm -hmm. allegedly Bucky beat the shit out of the night before. <laughs> He was super jealous because Hogan and Linda at that time were known for the little uh, swingy swing. Yeah. So he thought they were trying to get Elizabeth in on that. Mm. You're not sleeping with my wife, buddy. I'm not fucking your wife, brother. <laughs> I wouldn't trust him. He said that. I mean, he, no, he, no, fuck he screwed, no. he fuck screwed no, I'm not Bob of the Lump Sponge wife. Yeah, exactly. Like the fucking sex tape. He's fucking Bubba the Love Sponge's wife. Like, he's fucking his best friend's wife. Like, like dude, <laughs> of course he, he would do it to fucking Savage's wife. Oh, God. So, I found out about this tag match. Um, so, Hogan and Bruce Barber Beefcake's returns came out of nowhere. This tag match was supposed to be Money Inc. versus the Nasty Boys. Oh. Mm. But Vince was like, oh, this is a better storyline. So 
on a WWF Superstars, the Nasty Boys did a promo where they were like, you know what, Hogan, evening, you take care of your business, we'll step away. I mean, I, I, I see it, like, with the whole, like, Brutus getting hit with the briefcase. I see it from yeah. the kayfabe sense. But this is just Brian Knobs ball licking here. Being yeah, like, yeah. no, no, brother, you can you can take my spot at this pay per view. Yeah. Like it's okay, I'll sit at home, it's fine. Like, dude, nah, fuck that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fucking be like, nah, man, this is our fucking match. Like, what the yeah. hell? I'd put up a fucking fight about it, but Knobs yeah. saying not... like they kiss Hogan's ass. Yeah, <laughs> let me smell your farts, brother. Come on, please. <laughs> Ugh. Then we got Money Inc. versus Ball Liquor Inc. <laughs> Fuck this fucking match, dude. Oh See, this God. is where we go off the rails. Yeah. My God. first note on here was what the fuck was on Brutus's face? He looked that like mask Brutus. was fucking wild. It's horrible. Because it, Mike, isn't that the same mask that Taker uses later? Yes, it's literally just painted. It's, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. later on in like in next year. Ninety five. Uh, yeah, it's like yeah, ninety four. Yeah. Ninety four. Yeah. There's a spot where Taker has his orbital <laughs> bone broken, like legitimately. He gets hurt by Mabel. Yeah, he gets hurt by yeah, he gets hurt by Mabel or Big Daddy V. Misra. Crushes Taker's orbital bone like for real in a botch in a match. Yeah. And so he comes back. With that same fucking mask that Beefcake has on, it's just painted silver. Yeah. So. Which on yeah, Taker. When we on, get to that era. Right. I better go off on this row because. He... Dude, he hurts so many people, like legitimately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, but the the mask though on Taker, it looks cool. Yeah. On this is fucking. Brutus, it looks. It just looks. He looks. He looked like he was trying to be a transformer. Yeah, he looks like he was trying to be Hulk Hogan for Halloween. It's like Hulk Hogan meets Batman with that fucking goofy ass mask. <laughs> it's so fucking weird, dude. Like, I just put Brutus looks like the biggest tool in that goofy ass mask. Oh. Like, what yeah. is this nonsense? And then just oh. Savage just constantly like Hulk Media's back, yeah, thinking in his head. I punched him because I think he fucked my wife. I know he's <laughs> fucking my wife. <laughs> he's channeling his anger t as towards uh, pumping he's, up Hogan. He's just he's just getting more and more fuel for his 2003 rap album. Yeah. For for Wait, that. Beat, Randy that... has a rap album. Oh, 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 oh. Brie. So Randy Savage in 2003 came out with a rap album. It's called "Be a Man." Be a man, and it's literally a whole album of him rapping about his hatred for Hulk Hogan and Brutus the Barber Beefcake. That except is for, so great. Okay, except except for except for one song, yeah, that he wrote about um, right after um, Mr. Perfect died. Yeah, he's got a perfect perfect tribute song, but the rest of the album is him just shooting on Hogan. It is it's so great. It's on. It's on. I YouTube. had this CD. I I'm gonna have. It. Yeah, it, it's on. It's on YouTube. That's you can. So you can great. find it. It's <laughs> yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, like it's, it's the best. Yeah. Randy said it was around the same time. He, did he do? Uh, oh, Spider Man. He was in Spider Man at this time. Yeah, yeah. It, was right, it was right after he did uh, his cameo as Bone Saw in yeah, Spider Man. Spider -Man. The, the Bone first Spider Man is ready. Yeah, I got you for three minutes. God, yeah, fucking. But yeah, so that rabbit hole is wild. <laughs> it's fucking nuts, dude. It's, it is hilarious. Fucking all right. Then the match is fucking what it is. Money Inc. wins by a DQ because of the ref bump. Mm. So it's so like up. you don't want money to lose the titles, but you don't want to like give Hogan. Oh, Hogan has to look strong and defeat. Fucking <sighs> so fucked. Up. And then they get in the ring. They get fucking the the DQ happens. Mm -hmm. 
Beefcake and fucking Hogan are going to beat the shit out of the referee. <laughs> and Jimmy Hart's like, no, 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 baby, don't do not do it. Let me do it. And he fucking just yeets him out of the ring. Mm. Hogan poses for 15 goddamn minutes. Oh, Beefcake God. makes him do the fucking the Fargo strut with him. Which, I don't understand that part. Why are we doing the Fargo strut? You ain't the Fargos? Yeah, he... he he did that though. That was his like. That was oh, his yeah. thing. Did, yeah, I don't understand that. people who do in the Fargo show when they're not the Fargos. I mean, the only other one that could do it is Flair. Yeah, Flair. Like, that's it. Yeah. Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett did it, but what? Fuck Jeff Jarrett. Um, and then they find the briefcase. Yeah. Which has and a he, brick and a bunch of and a bunch of one dollar bills. <laughs> And he just starts passing them all out. The the fucking the the part that actually made me like laugh out loud is like after they get it out, Hogan's fucking dance with the money is so goddamn <laughs> funny, dude. He's like, "What the fuck are you doing, Terry?" <laughs> with your shitty fucking black eye. Mm. It's fucked up. And then out of nowhere, fucking afterwards, Todd Pettengill interviews Natalie Cole. Yeah. Who's just hanging out in the crowd. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. You know Nat King Cole, right? Yes. Yes. That's his daughter. Oh. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She had a she had a singing career as well. Oh, I did not know that. Either. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. She did it this at this time. Yeah, she oh. was she was doing stuff. And then <laughs> Just she's like, I can't believe they were handing out real money. I guarantee you, it was like twenty dollars in singles, and then a bunch of fake ones. Yeah, mm -hmm. it had to be. Like it had to be, dude. They're not gonna give away that kind of money. Like, like no fucking way. I mean, even if it was all singles, they're like getting out like what a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, Hogan probably did that. He's probably you can take my strip club money, brother. <laughs> Whatever. Fucking, and then also the the CEO of Caesar's Palace, who's putting it over like this is the most excitement we've ever seen, and we've had eighty world title boxing matches and all this stuff, and I'm like, like dude, ice hockey, yeah, and I guarantee you he's probably just like, can you guys hurry up and get the fuck out of my parking lot? You're killing my yeah. business here. Yeah, I was gonna say, right? yeah. we're losing money hand over fist because of you fucks. Get out of our parking lot. <laughs> Get out of my company! Like, it's so fucking bullshit. Oh. All right. What's next on the dock? It was uh, yeah. Lex Luger and Mr. Perfect. We had the perfect promo, which he wasn't perfect on that promo at all. No, <laughs> he, was... he didn't say anything during that promo. And he stumbled over his words like four times. He was, uh, he was probably like... Man, the, the the bag's hitting me, brother. We we got to get this over with. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna blow up before I get to the ring. Come on, Gene. Come on, me, Gene. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Luger's entrance. God. Got the four the four the women. Spark horse. Yeah. With the uh, I put the uh, the four mirrors with the uh, the the fireworks spooters attached <laughs> to the back of them. I will say. If it wasn't super windy like it was, it this would have this would have looked this would have looked kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. But, but I felt bad for like when you're when you're looking at the screen, the the woman on the far left is like hiding for dear life because the fucking fireworks are coming back towards her hair. She's like, oh shit! <laughs> yeah, big nineties hair is gonna catch yeah, on fire. We don't want the big poof. That we don't want the big poof to catch on fire. There, there's about two cans worth of Aquanet in between those four women. They would have exploded, like. And then they have a Michael Jackson accident. No shit, right? Like <laughs> they, that, you can tell that one had a lot of hairspray in her hair. She's just like, oh god, I'm gonna die. And then afterwards, they get out of the ring. They're walking to the back, and Perfect comes out. The brunette is like trying to like feel up on. I, okay, all right. Oh, he, no, thank God. He, he hits. He hits her with the Dave Chappelle. Get away from me, bitch! Fucking <laughs> 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 dying, dude. I was like, yes, good job, Kurt. He's like, get, get away from me, bitch! I'm like. What are you doing? <laughs> he's married too, so he's probably like, I don't want to get caught here. No. Yeah, he's like, hands off the merchandise. Like my wife's waffles. my wife's gonna be watching this. Get away from me. Yeah, I got my family watching this, dude. I'm gonna get stabbed <laughs> when I get home. 
what are you talking about? I think Curtis was also like had just been born, so he's probably like seriously like Yeah, dude, like I got kids, man. Fuck out of here. <laughs> like But yeah, the the match the match itself not was, bad. Was not bad. Yeah. Like but, given given what it what it was, it was actually a pretty solid match. And mm -hmm. fun fact, I actually watched um a kayfabe commentaries on Friday night. It was uh, one of the timeline ones. Yes, yeah. it was. It was great. Yeah, it was. It was a combination of three for the year of 1993. It was uh, Todd Gordon doing ECW, um, Vader doing WCW, WCW, and Luger doing WWF at this time. And it was talking about like him coming up with the character and stuff like that, and then talking about this Mania match and stuff. And uh, it was pretty an interesting insight because he was like Luger was talking about how he was trained by Hiro Matsuda down in Florida. And he was like, and Hiro Matsuda, it was basically like, don't do any high flying stuff. Just stick to what you yeah. do. Yeah. So that's kind of like how that like made his style. So like for what his style was, he was actually like, it fit because he was like, I mean, look at that fucking dude. He yeah. is a freak of nature. Like, I mean, that bodybuilder, fucking crazy ass physique. Like, the the character fits perfectly, but the the ending of this match was shit. Yeah. With yeah. The, like, the backslide, perfect feet in the ropes, but the ref mm -hmm. doesn't see it. And it's like ah, it's bullshit. And then Luke or Perfect's giving out to the ref, like, what the fuck? My feet were in the ropes. Hits him with the bionic elbow, drops him, knocks him out. He comes to and like looks around the ring, and people are like, "It was Luger! It was Luger!" And he just fucking hightails it to the ring or mm -hmm. hightails it to the back, jumps Luger. But then Shawn Michaels Shawn is Michaels. there with his fucking shitty mullet, the oh. shitty fucking mullet and the tight ass jeans, it's skin tight ass jeans. He probably had cowboy boots on too. Mm -hmm. Fucking jumps, jumps perfect because I think that leads into a, a program with those two, right, Mike? It does. Yeah. It leads to the famous parking lot brawl. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, the parking lot brawl comes up. That's uh, Survivor Series, right, or SummerSlam? No, I think that happens at a brawl. Oh really? Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, not mistaken. Hmm. because they ruined a bunch of wrestlers' cars. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, they're like <laughs> legitimately the wrestlers' cars they get yeah. fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Vince is probably like, "I'll pay for it, whatever." It's yeah. fine. It's it's fine. I know I know a guy that'll give me some work for cheap. It's cool. It's I've never heard the story of like I've never heard the story of them watching it and guys didn't know that was gonna happen and like Mean Gene's car gets fucked up and he was like. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> this is a rental, motherfucker. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Boy. Yeah. Oh, God. And then another, I put down another Randy and Bobby arguing ringside. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, over, this over is where... Something. I think this was where they were, like, about to fucking beat the shit out of I think, <laughs> so, yeah. Towards the end, I you could tell they... <laughs> They wanted to beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> Jim Ross, get your hands off me, Bobby. <laughs> Hold on a minute now. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Savage up. I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> Fuck you, Bobby. <laughs> I think Savage is just taking like, all his anger out from Hogan on yeah, the Bobby. Uh, Bobby. <laughs> Poor Bobby. <laughs> I'm calling you Terry right now, brother. I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> Oh God! But then, oh boy, Giant Gonzalez versus the Undertaker. Oh, My boy. favorite Taker entrance ever, dude. Yeah, this this entrance is so sick. The like, pro is phenomenal. The fucking the, the buzzard on the, on the cart with him. It's like the I put the buzzard on the coach is a sign of things to come because this match is dead on arrival. You mm -hmm. got fucking yeah. Giant Gonzalez coming out with his fucking. Attack on Titan meets fucking Tarzan gimmick. <laughs> just this fucking it's that suit is so weird. 
so weird. And then the <laughs> the camera cuts. Yeah, this, so that, this is a match you show furries. Hundred percent, hundred percent. The it, like Giant Gonzalez comes to the ring, and then it just cuts to some little girl who looks fucking bored out of her mind. <laughs> like, Dad, I want to go home. That that's us too. <laughs> and the whole time I'm just thinking, okay, there's one more match after this, but then I remember what it is, and I'm just like, fuck. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, why? Ah. <clears throat> uh. Guys, thoughts on this shit? What, what? How do you chloroform a dead man? I know, what the fuck? Wait, what the fuck is this smoking? How do you chloroform someone who's supposed to be dead? I'm fucking pissed. See, this is where I go off the fucking rails. I don't give a fuck about the main event. This shit pissed me off. Go off, go off, dude. <laughs> Like, like, we have, we a, have gimmick a gimmick where this dude is supposed to be dead. Like, he's supposed to not get beat up at all. Like, he's not supposed to, nothing's supposed to hold him. But he's gonna faint from chloroform? What the fuck? He can't chloroform a zombie, what the fuck? <laughs> this is so bullshit, dude. Like, it starts off, like, the, thing, the whole thing, there's, like, no continuity at all. Because the whole thing, it starts off, like, Giant Gonzalez... Hits like a taker and taker no sells it. Like he's just no selling all of his offense. Like he like gets hit to the ground immediately, sits up, like doing all this, and then fucking Bruno throws in the goddamn chloroform rag, and he takes out the fucking zombie. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> stupid! This is so fucking stupid. <laughs> like if I could smack Vince for what thing? It's sort of this bull well, there's a lot of things I want to smack kids for, but this is top of the list. This, yeah. this is the first one. This is the this is the first super egregious thing that he's done. The fact that Mark Calloway, and yes, I'm calling him by his name, allowed this shit to happen. He's he's involved in a lot of the bullshit. Yeah. Oh god. It's like this man this match may be the wor it may be the worst thing that Taker's ever done. This is the worst mm -hmm. match in the streak era. Easily in the streak. Like, yeah. up until the, the fucking the chloroform spot, it's not that terrible, really. The chloroform like, spot fucks this up. And then it completely just shits the bed with that. But, but, because the crowd is fucking pissed. They're chanting <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> they, yeah. they are seriously chanting bullshit. Mm -hmm. And then finally, to pop the crowd, Taker comes back, saunters out, all drugged out from the chloroform, like, and <laughs> takes down Gonzalez, and the crowd goes home happy. But I wouldn't even be, be happy with that finish. That's a. I I'd be going to the fucking ticket takers and be like, "Give me my goddamn money back." Between the this and watching. the. The only other match I can say that's maybe just as bad is the King Kong Bundy match. Oh, yeah. The match with Taker and King Kong Bundy is Bullshit. fucked. It's so bad. But, oh, God. Um. So, after this shit, <laughs> we go back to Mean Gene, who's doing the recap build-up to Bret Hart and Yoko. And then Hulk Hogan doing a Hogan promo goes. on the greatness of Bret Hart and then doing what he does to Bret. Fuck you, Hulk. Okay. Fuck fuck you, Terry. Fuck you, Terry. So Hogan has to get his goddamn two cents in. Two minute promo, five brothers. Mm -hmm. Two of them in the same goddamn sentence. <laughs> Bret Hart, brother. You're all maniac. You're a brother. He speaks on run on sentences. <laughs> he says brother twice in like six words. <laughs> Fuck you, Terry. The Ford education system is not that good. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, 
I literally am just like, what the fuck? And then all of a sudden he just throws out the Asian fucking slur towards Yoko. I'm like, dude, what the fuck, my guy? Yeah, I wasn't going to touch that part. Just fuck you, Terry. Mm, you're shitty fucking. I just put. I just Here, put here's what I got to say about him. You no good rotten bastard. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Go away, you piece of shit. <laughs> fuck you, dude. Oh my god, this son of a bitch comes in and immediately is like, whoever wins, I get the first shot. Mm -hmm. Suck my dick from the back, Terry. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> Ugh, god. I want that clip. <laughs> fuck it, yeah, do it. <laughs> this... Oh god, this fucking guy. <coughs> I, I have no words. Like my title thing says, I have no words. Shit. And yeah. hey, we haven't even got to the match yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. We haven't even hit the main event yet. I'm already like, fuck this. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. Oh, God. The only cool part about this goddamn match is the fucking foot in the rope catapult, catapult part. Yeah. That was lit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Brett, mm -hmm. this Brett Yoko match. That's what I put. I was like, oh, well, first, before we get in there, I put, after this Hogan interview, it cuts back to Todd Pettengill in the crowd. It's like, then Todd Pettengill just makes fun of some kid's ears. Fuck this company in the ass with a fork. <laughs> that was, I forgot about the making yeah, fun of the fork. Fuck this company, kid. dude. Like... God damn it, Todd. I know you're just doing your job. And I know Vince is probably like, make part of the fucking kids' ears. But, like, why? <laughs> this was not needed. I want to know what the kid is doing now these days. Probably having extensive therapy because he was fucking <laughs> ripped on for having big ears on fucking, on fucking Mania. Oh my God. People paid money to watch fucking Todd Pettengill make fun of my fucking ears. <laughs> It's bullshit. It's so bullshit. Uh, Christ alive. <laughs> oh, good. That was Bret Hart and Yoko. Yoko. Bret and Yoko. I've always loved Yoko's presentation. Fucking phenomenal. With like yeah. the women coming out, giving him the giant bouquet of flowers. Him doing the like throw of the salt at the beginning and like the stretch out. I really wish they wouldn't do that fucking camera shot where it's basically just like you're looking up Yoko's asshole. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I fuck, like, why? Yeah. <laughs> why is this needed? It's like you're just it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like it's a shot of like Brett across the ring through his legs. It's like, yeah, but you're like fucking staring at Yoko's ball bag. And it's like, and I don't want to fucking see this. <laughs> Nobody wants this. I don't think Yoko wanted that shit. He's just like, don't put, oops, don't put that camera near my ass. <laughs> no, he definitely wanted. He was a gangster from fucking Cali. Yeah, yeah, fucking Rodney wouldn't. <laughs> Rodney wouldn't fucking with that. <laughs> you better back up with that camera, oops. <laughs> oh, God. I Still, the greatest lie that wrestling <laughs> ever told us is that they made a Samoan man Japanese. God. And they kept chanting USA the whole time, which kind of pissed me off which a little is, bit. I made I made a note of that. I'm like, this fucking crowd is chanting USA for a match Fuck between Brett a Samoan and Canada. A, yeah, between a Samoan and a Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, like, like Yokozuna is technically from the U.S. But he they've made him out to Cal be from Japan. He's born in California, so technically, <laughs> this fucking crowd is chanting for Yoko. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> My k wasn't ruined. <laughs> oh my god. That's so hilarious. And like, I was looking back and I was watching a bunch of like the, the Yoko matches like that we covered and like stuff like before that. And now it makes more sense that Yoko is like that they're that they lied about fucking Yoko because when he's like yelling at the crowd or yelling into the camera or whatever, he always mentioned Samoa in his fucking things. He's like, he's speaking Samoan the entire time. It's like. Oh, now it fucking makes sense. <laughs> God, this is fucked. Yeah. This is so fucked. I, somebody who went to school with a bunch of Samoans, 
in high yeah. school. I loved watching Yoko stuff now because it's like, oh, oh, oh yeah, fucking speaking some off this whole fucking time. <laughs> and all the fucking wrestling fans are like, oh, that's Japanese. Everybody from the West Coast is like, nope, <laughs> nope, that's not right. <laughs> but the match starts off crazy, like fucking Bret Hart running out with the fucking the, the John <coughs> Woo missile drop kick at the beginning. I'm like, holy shit, dude, he's going buck wild right now. Mm -hmm. But then like the that leg tie up spot that Mike was talking about, that was yeah. actually super inventive. Like I haven't really seen that a lot with matches with Yoko. No. So it's like that was cool. Like that was actually like really, really good way, like good story building yeah. part of the yeah. match. Then it kind of goes back and forth for a while, and then the this fucking ending, this fucking. What did ending. Fuji um spray into Brett? Was it salt yeah. that he yeah. sprayed into Brett's face? Okay. He had a he had a bag he had a he had a couple bags of salt in his kimono, and he oh. dumped one in his hand and threw mm. it into Brett's eyes. That's the first time I've actually ever seen that spot work. Because usually it gets pushed to the side. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's more of just like the big puff of smoke visual thing yeah. but no he actually drills brett in the face with it yoko gets the pin as soon as three hits fucking terry is hauling ass to the ring mm. brother 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 <laughs> bullshit brother 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 <laughs> fuck you so i about oh i found out was brett thought he was winning this whole time, found out the day he was taking the pinfall, the day before Mania happened. Oh, oh. fuck, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 fuck. So, that's not only do you find out, and that's when you found out with the Hulk Hogan spot. So, you find out you're taking the pinfall, you're losing, and then, oh, Hogan's gonna get that one, that big pop. Mm hmm. There's no it's, wonder fucking Bret Hart hates Hulk Hogan as much as he did and how he hated him in WCW when he went there in 97. I wouldn't trust that motherfucker at all. Because he got because he got out politicked by the greatest politicker in wrestling and he God. got butthurt about it. And I mean rightfully so. Like not only not only am I dropping my title, you have to fucking you're the one leaving the fucking pay per view with the belt. Fuck, fuck you. Mm -hmm. Fucking Hogan comes out, tending to Brett. Fuji cuts the promo. Ma Yokozuna challenges you to a match, and we'll put the title on the line. Brett is like, go, go, fuck off, get away from me, go. He gets in the he gets in the ring, attacked by Yoko, has him tied up. Fuji's gonna throw the salt in the eyes. Hogan ducks. Yoko eats it. Close lines him down. Big leg drop. One, two, three. Hulk Hogan wins the match in thirty fucking seconds. Bullshit. Bree, you told us earlier you have some thoughts. Go off. I just think it's utter bullshit that your first time your first match back obviously was the tag match and then you just automatically assume that you're gonna get a title shot and the fact that you get one the same show and you win it was vince fucking hulk hogan yeah yeah probably yeah yeah, that, that, yeah. we're it's safe to assume Okay, Sean got the same treatment in the late nineties. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, Sean Michaels. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, it's all fucked. <laughs> it's all fucked. It's a big fuckery. God. And like after he wins, Hogan's sitting there posing, and you see off camera Sa Savage is standing up and clapping. And plotting him. pissed off and angry. Yeah, just like, that oh, face was I'm awkward. Be I'm beating <laughs> the shit out of this motherfucker as soon as we get back to the back. I'm laying him the fuck out. <laughs> like, but the whole time he's just like, yeah, old is back. Yeah. <laughs> fuck this shit. Once again, folks, we watch this under duress. We watch this shit so you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Never. 
So, uh, 22, or, yeah, so eight out of the 22 performers at this mania were gone by the end of the year. Oh, wow. 36%. Yeah, because yeah, it's wow. like Hogan leaves. Hogan Beef Kick leave after a tour of, uh, in Europe in the summer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tuna. Uh, Tito and Santana and Papa Shango, who were a dark match, by the way. Right. You're not going to put fucking Tito on this fucking card? Come on. They man. both leave. Rightfully so. DiBiase leaves and finishes up his wrestling career in Japan. Yeah, because he, he goes to all, all Japan, Japan, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Matt Bourne leaves and is replaced. Yeah, he's replaced. I forget who takes his spot. It's not Steve Kern, is it? Yeah, it's Steve. Steve oh, was Steve, that. Steve that Kern was now. their little way to get Steve Kern to see if he can do the joint character. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Dragon Gonzalez leaves. I think he retires. Yes, he does. He goes back home, and then Mister Perfect takes a sabbatical. He ends up taking a couple years off, then going to WCW. And won't be back mm-hmm. until 2002. Yeah. Yeah, because he comes and back. This was the spot. changing of the guard. Those old timers leaving. And then we see the new generation. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah, fuck this pay per view. <laughs> fuck <That's>... this mania. <laughs> they, they, <coughs> it, it only gets better from here. Yeah. yeah. As far as, as, far as like, the pay per views go, it, it only gets okay. better from here. Yeah. Well, in commentary, will too. Pretty soon. Yeah. Oh commentary, yeah. Commentary. I think it was the best part of the fucking commentaries. We didn't have to see that son of a bitch. Because yeah. Rob Bar- Rob Bartlett was not there, and we got good old Jr. So I'm like, yes, this is awesome. Fuck yes, and we only have two weeks out of the next show with Rob Bartlett, and then everything else is light years better commentary wise. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. This fucking right. show. That wraps up this episode of Queen's Court where we talked about WrestleMania 9, which was fucking bullshit. Absolute bullshit. So, on behalf of the Tribal Queen, on behalf of Vusky Rhodes, on behalf of Mike DePlasis, thank you guys for watching and uh, listening to us talk about this shit show. But, if you like it, Like the video, comment, and we will see you guys next time.